welcome everybody for another podcast uh, by d life today in fact we're going to have uh, yogesh talking about two case studies of people who he has helped overcome various uh, lifestyle uh, disorders uh, you know to give you a small background about yogesh he has been in the corporate for over 26 years uh, i believe in it and uh, you know he has always had some interest towards health and wellness and uh, fitness and all these things but it was only in the uh, last 3 uh, three and a half years that he has taken the plunge into this industry completely by uh, quitting the corporate career he is uh, in, he is a low carb uh, nutritionist uh, you know he's done the diploma certification through d life itself uh without wasting much time you know maybe you can give a little background about yourself and let us know about the two case studies that you'd like to discuss sure thanks for the wonderful uh, introduction uh, poshini and uh, yeah i mean so so basically this uh, interest got developed because of number of things i i may not i don't intend to talk a lot about myself uh, most of the most of the time that we'll invest in uh, the case studies but uh this loka started probably around 5 years back um, when i was uh, basically uh, in the diabetic region i mean the early sets of onset of diabetes and then i was trying uh, doing different ways in terms of remedying that particular condition and uh, something that helped me or only thing that helped me i would say after a lot of experimentation was loka and that's how uh, I, while i was in my corporate uh, space uh, i thought of like uh, taking uh, a deeper dive into this particular uh, so called maybe science and then started learning in a very formal way and then uh, finally i could remit my diabetes and th- then thought of like uh, getting into this space or field as a low carb nutrition so that is what uh, i've been doing in a formal way for last 3 and 1/2 years and uh, trying to touch people's lives help them in different ways as such so today what i'm going to be doing i'm uh, basically talking about two different case studies and uh, those might sound a bit similar because both are uh, type 2 diabetes remission case studies Uh, the second one i may not call uh, want to call that as a remission first one definitely is a remission as such but uh, once we get there we'll get an understanding uh, how much low carb can influence and help even this in the uh, second uh, case study as well so what i'll do is i'll share my screen uh, i've captured those uh, uh, on a couple of slides as such so let me share my screen uh, let me know once you start seeing this yeah we can see it awesome so uh, don't in- i mean this is a very rough sketch uh, this not much of a this thing i mean time that we are going to be spending on this slide session but uh, a lot of information that can be collected from uh, these two slides so the first one is for prashant um, he's like around uh, uh, early 40s uh, software professional and we know i mean what happens with the software professionals uh, he's been a very kind of a workaholic uh, person right and then uh, sedentary kind of a lifestyle so um, i i would like to give a lot of background about why certain conditions also happen because uh, i think i i may not be an expert in terms of let's say medication or something like that but i do uh, i do help people with also changing their mindset because i believe that is the first uh, stumbling block that most of the people come across uh, i mean while changing anything to a little extent also i think people struggle or they they do not uh, have that courage to basically make or bring those changes so that's how i think i i work a lot with mindset change so this particular person is similar kind of a situation i'll talk about that in a bit so software professional um, and then uh, at, at a very senior level uh, kind of a cso level and then uh, small organization but a senior position as such and then uh, so so basically he's been a diabetic for last uh, five plus years he's uh, been on uh, 2000 mg of metformin for uh, uh, as many years and then maybe i mean it it must have grown uh, gradually but uh, recently he was on 2000 mg of metformin 1000 mg each for lunch and 1000 for the dinner as such and then he's been like 12 kg overweight he's been doing number of different things i mean he's uh, a passionate runner so he used to run and uh, with the with the with the intent that his weight probably would go down and things like that right so most of the people all of us would come across that they must be doing some not some lot of different things in anticipation that their weight would come down or maybe their blood glucose levels would um, would would get into uh, uh, normal c and things like that but most of them they get uh, do not get even closer to what they want or what they intend so this person was like no were not not very different uh, from others so he 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 couldn't get any closer to his uh, uh, weight aspirations and things like that while he worked real hard in terms of and many many of these people do 
very i would say a grave mistake in terms of uh, being overweight they run and that's something that is really very detrimental to their health because uh, the cardiac muscle right i mean uh, they put a lot of weight on the cardiac muscle so i i think the education starts from over there like what kind of activities that they should be doing and not doing right because many a people have been doing these things because we know that uh, marathon has been kind of an buzzword right i mean an activity for for uh, last several years and then people have been because someone else next door or maybe some colleague some friend is running let let me start with running and things like that without without an, uh, even understanding what can be the downside or flip side of that so uh, many times they come across uh, further joint pains uh, many other issues right so that's where i think i had to stop him from running as such and then move him to some, some other workouts then um, the other thing that happened is uh, i think because of the kind of religious aspects uh, right i mean cultural aspects uh, they are like completely vegetarian at home uh, he is uh, because uh, he's been uh, like i mean in it and like uh, worked uh, elsewhere uh, in the foreign countries abroad for some time he's been uh, used to having let's say chicken or fish uh, and even eggs also but uh, that was not like uh, that prominent at home as such so uh, initial uh, this thing i mean um, uh, uh, what i mean a trouble or maybe challenge was like to to move him from let's say whatever what, the kind of uh, vegetarian diet he had to this thing and then um, like everyone else i mean he was like uh, really very really worried about high fat i mean what would happen to because his uh, lipid profile was uh, I, i forgot to mention about the lipid profile sorry about that in both the cases uh, i could have mentioned that i'll probably update it and then send it across later but yeah, i mean uh, lipid profile was definitely a challenge and that's how he never wanted to get into a high fat kind of an uh, regime as such and uh, yeah so so those are the kind of prevailing conditions and situations and uh, that's where we got started i think last uh, september probably and then um, what happened i mean i'll talk about the journey in a bit but uh, if you can look at the next thing about the achievement so his hba1c got dropped from 7.3 to 6.3 uh, in a in a span of 3 months and at the same time the medications have been reduced to almost zero right i mean recently he's been checking on glucometer he's also looking at whether to get to an uh, cgm or not uh, but otherwise his blood glucose levels are amazingly range bound all the time for last maybe one one and a half months and uh, he's uh, stopped taking medication uh, i mean uh, since last few weeks as such and some of that is happening in accord with the doctor some of that probably not because of the proximity of doctor is not much over there where he stays uh, weight obviously has been reduced by 8 plus kg in 3 uh, months sorry so that's that's an amazing what i mean progression that uh, this person has seen and uh, not just that in terms of uh, his uh, his uh, activities right i mean in terms of the physical activities that he can do and so i'm i'm still not for the lack of better words i mean not allowed i mean to him to get started with running because i i would still have him to basically undergo 4 5 kg of weight loss and then get started with running and uh, he's currently in the northern parts of europe right so that's how it's it's difficult to go out and run as well so that's so i'm trying to make maximum use of uh, the uh, current conditions and then have him uh, working on a lot of strength train uh, body weight kind of workouts like maybe squats lunges uh, uh, and all all of these right i mean push ups all of these with weight most of these are like uh, with weights right i mean dumbbells uh, ankle weights and things like that so he's he's shown a great deal of improvement in terms of uh, his uh, physiological as well as metabolic health and he's he's absolutely happy his family i mean obviously i'll talk about that later maybe but uh, they have i mean uh, you you must have been seen uh, this kinds of uh, occurrences uh, but family sometimes is like not very aligned or inclined towards what this person is or uh, this particular i mean these individuals are doing while they're seeing a lot of changes they're somehow not bought into that i mean i'll talk i mean we we can take take up that separately but these are some amazing benefits that you've got just within 3 months or so so what is work for me, for him right i mean and i might be going little fast i'm not too sure i may wrap this up uh, a little quicker than expected but uh, i'll i'll be uh, happy to take uh, a number of questions just in case there are uh, any and this may not be a lot different than what all of you uh, have been doing but uh, in terms of um, practicing low carb but yeah i mean uh, from from let's say very less of paneer and eggs and no fish and chicken he's been actually moved to a lot of paneer eggs almost every single day and then fish and chicken whenever he is outside maybe traveling or uh, during the uh, office hours i mean whenever he get a chance to have outside food he is uh, basically uh, having only fish and chicken for last four, four five months as such 
So it's been completely um, transitioned into having non-vegetarian or I would say fatty protein kind of foods as compared to what it was earlier. So uh, I think for him again, uh, moving away from wheat was 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 definitely a great deal of uh, I would say concern or maybe challenge as such. But but we could we could achieve that in first three or four weeks. So uh, what I what I do usually and again may not be a lot different. But first three or four weeks I'll look at it from a transition standpoint. And a lot of things that we were like living and breathing right. I mean in uh, the IT profession I've I've incorporated most of those over here and that's and and most of these I uh, I run those as projects right. I mean so that helps in terms of uh, getting to a win win kind of a situation kind of real quick or in a time bound manner. So look up definitely helped. Uh, He's absolutely not having, uh, at least for six days, I would say, uh, maybe 10, 12 meals. He's not having absolutely any carbohydrates. I'll talk about some of the deviations uh, uh, towards the end of this, but uh, he's been quite disciplined, I would say. What uh, the kind of uh, exercise that is required, and this is again, we discussed a lot about, um, I mean, after uh, postprandial, right? I mean, that is where I think the most critical aspect uh, to, to make sure that the blood glucose is not rising at all. So we are basically arresting the situation be before even it comes into play. So uh, floor climb has been working amazingly well for most of the people who are diabetic and getting their uh, sugar levels to a normalcy. Uh, but at the same time, many people are so, so I would say, again, for the lack of better words, lazy that they do not want to be having even go for a walk, like a 10, 15 minutes walk after meal. And this is what I've been doing for ages. And before even I became diabetic, I was uh, I was I was doing some of those things. But anyways, any which ways, I think floor climb has worked or maybe if not floor climb, at least the walk that he's been doing in a very consistent manner that has helped a lot. And then, like I said earlier, that uh, he's been doing Surya Namaskars, uh, squats, uh, lunges and with weights, right? I mean, and then a lot of these things are like, I, I again, I mean, from an IT or other fitness standpoint also, there is, Either you call it as incremental updates or you can call it as progressive overload. So I make sure that they are, they're increasing their intensity as we move along, right? I mean, maybe every week, couple of weeks, we either increase the workload or maybe we increase the intensity by adding some more weights or whatnot. I mean, whatever that is available. But I make sure that the intensity is on the rise because um, I, I, as they basically go forward in terms of their weight reduction, the intensity definitely is required to be on the higher side. So that definitely has helped in terms of even his uh, physical appearance, right? I mean, so so that's one. And then obviously, uh, two meals a day, 16 um, hours intermittent fasting. He's become a big fan of uh, bulletproof coffee to the extent that, again, um, looking at his uh, lipid, uh, we have to be reducing the, the intake of butter uh, after three months, four months. So um, that is, but, but he's been really very well aligned to 16 hours or uh, 16 hours of intermittent fasting and two meals a day. And uh, yeah, I mean, all of that happened because uh, again, I'm I, I, I most of the times I say that uh, the successes are not just like, I mean, he's on a particular regime or he's working with me or something like that. At the same time, I attribute that to uh, that a lot to the individual's focus, discipline, their belief, their faith also, because if that's not there, I think uh, whatever, whatever, uh, what I mean, uh, contribution that I would like to make that, that doesn't, that that's basically futile as such. So. Uh, I, I I give a lot of credit to, in fact, most of the credit to these individuals because uh, they they bring am amazing amount of focus. He's being uh, uh, an engineer again. I mean that helps at times. I'm mean, not like every time, but um, uh, that helps because he's having that scientific bent of mind. He goes into the detail, uh, he, and and some of these individuals I like uh, to work with a lot because uh, they they ask for more, right? I mean like. If let's say an LDL is increased, uh, he wants to understand why. And then if he share a lot of different insights, be it Nadir Ali, be it Paul Mason, be it number of other people, right? And then uh, some of these individuals actually consume a lot of, lot of uh, information that is available out in the open. And obviously, maybe uh, even D-Life, uh, whatever that we have, some of the podcasts. So uh, they get, I mean, some of these people, they, they invest time, they get an understanding and that's so at least he, I mean, I, I, I I would like to basically call upon that uh, after four months, his LDL shoot up to maybe around 200 plus. And, uh, but, but all the other parameters are absolutely fine, right? I mean, re uh, range bound. So uh, we, we are now basically look, I mean, uh, having a lot of monosaturated fats uh, brought into play, but otherwise he was not having a lot of concern about because, because he's uh, kind of convinced that it can happen and not to worry a lot about that. So, 
uh yeah i think uh, i've covered most of the things the, the only deviation or challenging part in this particular case was uh let's say couple of cheat meals every every single week there are going to be there there were cheat meals and uh, there were at times alcohol also and uh, yeah some fried foods so, i mean typical indian foods and things like that uh, and what some of these people do i mean they're like very smart or clever they know how to basically hack so biohacking is something that they probably uh, get with i mean they basically start adapting to real quick so he immediately on the next day he probably go for i mean do omat right i mean one thing that i forgot to mention over here is like most of these individuals who train with me they like a breeze they get into omat right i mean within 6 weeks 7 uh, weeks and it, this is there's absolutely nothing that is being mandated on them uh, they start doing it i mean i obviously coach them i i mentor them i, I tell a lot of benefits about uh, uh, basically having longer fasts but that does not mean that i actually ask them to be doing that but it happens in a very organic way uh, it happens uh, like by design so people i mean these individuals they come back to me they tell me that uh, yogesh uh, i'm not feeling hungry what to do and that's how it starts in terms of like i mean lowering the portion size further and then one one particular day basically uh, skipping a skipping a meal as such right so that's where i think uh, so th- this person has been leveraging that one meal a day in a very very uh, creative manner if i want to call that and whenever he's binging whenever he's uh, going for cheat meals uh, he's basically leveraging those uh, omar kind of things but yeah i mean um, as long as he's and un- see the important thing for me and uh, i think for most of us is they getting a full understanding about what's happening and what they are required to be doing to to keep away from their met- metabolic condition right and if that is that is happening i think nothing like that because they are now their own coaches they i mean that is what i basically like to coach everyone i tell them up front that um, this is a point in time thing you need to be becoming your own coaches you need to be like a lot in, in, uh, you need to be inquisitive you need to be asking a lot of question you need to be reading you need to be consuming a lot of content and that's how you'll be basically become a lot more aware of what's happening and what is what can be avoided by what means so that's about prashant uh, i'll take a pause uh, i can move forward if you have any other questions but uh before i uh, i i basically go to the next case uh, let me quickly yeah share uh, the testimony over here so this is what he sent uh, just a few days back right i mean this week itself and uh, he was um, in in on vacation somewhere in europe and uh, he came back from that vacation probably almost maybe 2 3 weeks 2 weeks probably and he's lost right i mean he's lost some weight and i i i see this as some of the biggest wins right because uh, because in the exact opposite also happens i mean while we talk about a lot of success stories all of us i, I know for sure that we come across a lot of uh, i mean people who are not so successful or maybe a lot of times uh, kind of a failure also so most of the people uh, they work uh, on this program uh, during let's say till till november december they are absolutely what i mean uh, uh, disciplined and they go on vacations they go on whatever i mean uh, they they come back to india and then uh, for one month there's a complete riot and then uh, they completely go off the track and then once they're back they are basically already gone up by maybe 3 4 kgs in a month maybe 5 weeks and then what happens is there is a lot of guilt that kicks in the, the people don't even want to go back and then stand on the scale they already know that uh, their their weight is on the uh, higher side i mean i'm not talking about uh, blood glucose levels but because anyways they are not checking that at all during their vacation so uh this is an exception and i mean these are some of the exceptions and uh, i feel really happy amazing that people can lose weight on their vacations because i've seen people doing let's say floor climb during their vacations uh, they are making absolute great use of beach if they are on beach at beach vacations uh, like i mean walking a lot so uh, these things if they can be a lot mindful uh, that they that the vacation is not only about let's say i mean um, splurging and then uh, eating what they want to eat and things like that i think i mean we, we all of us i mean we have in any ways uh, doing that but all of us can enjoy uh, the i mean uh, different aspects of life while not impacting our health and this is an amazing testimony that this guy is actually reduced some weight while he was on vacation so yeah i mean i'll, I'll take a pause now before i move forward either we can cover both the case studies and take questions or i'll take a pause and talk about the, i mean uh, take any questions as of now so how how do you uh, how do we go about that koshini yeah we can uh, probably uh, take some questions on this and then move on to the next sure. uh, yeah wonderful okay. yeah yeah so uh, yeah 
yeah maybe i i'll ask a couple of questions uh, sure. based on what you have already discussed here uh you mentioned that he was going on some of uh, cheats and things like that uh were you uh, guiding him on what he has to do or was it as you said he started thinking and uh, taking the precautionary methods you said he used omad and uh, uh, maybe elaborate a little bit more on that on sure. how was it can be coached through that something like that sure sure so so see i mean a um, lot of things i mean what uh, what is a cheat meal so i think you want to stop the screen share for the question i can yeah 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 One second. Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Cool. So, see, I mean, uh, while we do, I, I do some initial uh, discussions, conversations with uh, most of the individuals, and we talk about what I mean. We define what cheat meal is for them, right? Because for everyone, it can be different. But uh, that is being discussed. That even if we if we call it is uh, call that as a cheat meal, it is. in 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 a, in a purest way it is not a cheat meal as such i mean we need to be looking at a lot of substitutes and things like that and still you can enjoy and basically uh, what happens is uh, people uh, i mean social life i think uh, has a great impact on a lot of these things because while they are amazingly disciplined at their home or within their own space when it comes to when they get ex exposed to the outer world uh, a lot of uh, influence that kicks in right and then they they cannot hold on to that because see many times i think uh, while i tell them that uh, okay uh, so these few things that i i coach everyone that there is there is a, a meal that is being planned so what you can do is uh, if you know if you can influence uh, the the composition of that meal if uh, the people are like closer to you you can influence that you can ask them you can request them if not and most most of the times it, it won't be so what what you can do is like you can have probably a couple of options what you can do you can uh, basically have most of the meal at your home go over there and this is what i have been doing for and again the same thing be, even before i became diabetic i've started doing a lot of these things right ki uh, i used to basically have my food at 6 637 because that is what i'm doing for very long period of time and then i basically step into the uh, the house where there is a get together party what not and then just to give the respect to the lady of the house whatever that is being made at the home uh, house right i mean i basically have that i mean just, just a small katori the intent of being with people is basically to enjoy the company of kids people right i mean that that's the main intent it's not like whatever that is being cooked over there has to be consumed absolutely not and then uh, there is again a lot of social stigma that is attached to that so that's why i talk a lot about mindset because that is what is more required because many a times people don't if they hesitate right i mean there is a lot of uh, influence because we are going to someone's place i'll i'll give you a wonderful example right i mean this is a vegetarian family and sorry i mean i I'm, i don't i i think i'm not uh, diverting a lot we still have good amount of time so there is a there is a family in dubai that uh, we were I, i was working with and they are like amazing they they actually become many, many of these uh, these people they actually become family so uh, husband wife and uh, even the kid who was overweight they were like part of this program but uh, they were like so sincere and disciplined last eid right i mean after completing the program almost after one and a half years last eid 2022 i think uh, they were uh, they were uh, invited for a meal i mean dinner uh, right i mean uh, eid ka jo rehta hai and then uh, they they and being vegetarians they obviously had absolutely anything else but this uh, sheer kurma right so these guys have told the family ki uh, we'll go, come over there we'll have most of the food uh, sheer kurma is something that we definitely want to enjoy but please don't add any sugar to that yeah uh, uh, please don't add any sugar to that and then um, we will we'll bring our own stevia and uh, erythritol right and you won't believe that uh, they they actually go with their i mean went over there with their uh, this thing i mean uh, small bottle of uh, erythritol or whatever and then they you can imagine that right? i mean this is like unheard of and then people most of most of us would be shying away from doing this but because they are like really very i mean what focus towards their health and they are being coached and mentor i would say i mean i don't want to take i mean any credit or boast about this but the more that you talk about the kind of uh, impact that any and uh, fortunately they were not having a lot of uh, critical issues with them apart from weight but the lady was having thyroid uh, this person uh, 40 plus is having uh, i mean when he started some uh, lipid uh, deranged lipid profiles and things like that so that's how they wanted to take control of their health right and that's how they were like they they are still like amazingly disciplined 
but yeah i mean uh, so this is what i actually coach them that please have food at your home and then go to someone's place if you cannot control the food over there and then only have a bit of uh, food over there but many a times it is not possible that someone is like maybe going from office to that particular party place and then so so uh, they, i mean that's where i think they fight falter and then they cannot control and many a times there is absolutely no substitute available i mean i, I don't want to blame or maybe i mean on fingers at these people because uh, genuinely there is no but that's so i think and this is not something that i again for the sake of coaching i'm doing uh, i have i've experimented and implemented that on myself that for 48 hours i did not had food i mean um, and then this is what the kind of examples that i people so 2020 i was working on my first website i mean the earlier to what i've launched a month back and then uh, i i went to this place uh, where they they were working on my website uh, and then i was already like 24 hour fasted over there when i when i went and then um, i was not having i mean i i with the intent that let's say 3 4 hours and i'll be done by let's say 1 1 32 and then i'll come back and uh, have my lunch and in the work i mean that particular work went on till maybe 6 o'clock in the evening and then i thought like i mean there's no point in having food now so i on on uh, on the spur of the moment i took the decision that let's let's extend my fast till let's say another 24 hours and that's how i extended so a lot of these things help people in terms of getting an understanding that food is not absolutely important i mean let's say one meal they can easily maybe uh, skip right i mean there is not going to be a lot of bothration about abhi abhi ka meal nahi kiya aise so sorry i mean sorry for the hindi in between but yeah i mean uh, that's what uh, people having coached and then they use that to a certain extent maybe large extent but at times they are not able to control see i again i mean he's on this journey for maybe four months i know how how much longer that it took for me because there was no guide mentor coach whatever right i mean while i was studying while i was learning there are people available uh, maybe in the outs outer world but uh, when i was doing uh, a few years back there was absolutely no one who can i reach out to and then talk about but they have an immediate access and that's so i think even humans they can achieve a lot of these things and control a lot of these things i would say that's amazingly credible i mean uh, so so i none of us would want to be like real harsh on them if they are able to do a lot of these things and let's say a few times they are not able to com- uh, uh, what i mean comply to some of these uh, aspects i think that's okay but they are learning and then uh, they they are anyways uh, almost got there maybe 80 90% they have got on there so i'll take a pause i think hope i have answered your question yeah. Uh, yeah you did cover quite a bit about it on the mindset and uh, what yeah. it really it is from our end as well as on their end i think anjali has a question that she'd like to ask anjali you can go ahead yeah uh, so yogesh initially when you were giving a description about this guy uh, you're talking about bulletproof coffee and how he like brought it down to uh, two meals a day and all of that and then you were talking about how you are planning to reduce the portion size or reduce his food intake so, yeah. so i think somewhere in that context so when you are uh, starting off the program with them do you kind of give them an idea or you tell them this is how much they should be eating or do you just give a, a number but then go by uh, their hunger levels and how much they are able to rather than you know say this is what you are supposed to be eating yeah thanks i mean yeah wonderful question thanks for that anjali uh, so in fact uh, it's the other way around i mean most of the times what happens is i ask them to bump up their uh, food intake because we need to be getting i mean uh, basically compressing the food food window that is one and then making sure that they are eating well at the time that they should be eating a lot so so it is not l- eating less so three things i focus on one is uh, the first and most important is the composition of the food which is which has to be fatty protein that's one second is um, uh, the uh, the frequency of the foods which has to be maybe getting down to 3 and then 2 and then 2 maybe if required once in a week or maybe twice in a week kind of an one meal a day kind of. and then third thing is the timing that is also absolutely important while many people may not be disciplined and uh, may have some other uh, demanding situations but whatever to whatever extent i request them to adhere to a certain timing because that's where i think the calling would be uh, i mean for their entire life span that i'm going to be having food only at this particular time or maybe around this particular window i i should not be unnecessarily going to kitchen or whatever other places to have food because i won't be hungry at that time so getting into that particular discipline definitely matters so uh the other question is about uh, is there any what i mean quota rationing grams um, not almost nothing i mean the only guidance that i provided to them is in terms of how much fatty protein food that they should be having be it 
be it eggs paneer whatever i mean other non vegetarian food so this has to be let's say let, uh, around 150 200 grams of uh, some of these foods you have to be consuming in your lunch dinner can be a little let, lesser portion but everything else see once they have this controlled right i mean all the other things become let's say uh, very secondary and they do not even think about having a lot of these uh, foods i mean obviously they have uh, we talk about i mean uh, maybe greens or salads or sabzis i mean a lot of things that uh, which are local to in our kitchen i think those stay they do not change as such uh, one thing is about roti or whatever other things so that's the thing that i think uh, most of us have been uh, have been doing ki uh, we basically start reducing that um, in a gradual manner because uh, that may require a good amount of time so let's say if uh, they are having two or three rotis in lunch uh, gradually it, it goes down maybe week by week basis the same case, same is the case with sugar also at times if they they cannot see some of the people are really great in terms of uh, bringing that change right i mean uh, on the spur of the moment many will require time and i am not the one who should be what i mean imposing a lot of these things at one go on them because people will just run away if let's say so many different things because people are in their 40s 50s they have been having a lot of these baggage with them i mean I, again this is not any negative uh, connotation right i mean this is what i have gone through i have basically i have taken a lot of time most of the people must have taken time to to analyze to understand to start believing in certain things so but i think four weeks is an amazing period i have basically crunched it down to three or four weeks when most of the transition gets over and they started getting uh, a great belief in terms of what they are doing sorry i, I thought i mean i i hope you have covered i've covered everything anjali yes yes thanks so much yogesh yeah thank you yogesh just to you know ask in between this uh, session here uh, do you think it is uh, you know do you think that uh, what the diploma program that you did how has that helped you in terms of uh, helping this person maybe you can throw some light on that also let our viewers and other people know you know yeah. what are the advantages you can get out of uh, learning from oh, the diploma yeah yeah no that uh, yeah i mean uh, i i was supposed to be discussing about that this right i mean towards the end but uh, we we can definitely take this up now itself so we can uh, I, keep I, I, it at I, the got, end i just thought if it's in no, no, we, we if, can definitely talk yeah. i mean yeah definitely so uh, i've got i've got trained in sports nutrition exercise science obviously like everyone else i mean we have been following uh, great minds in this particular space right i mean low carb were doctors who have like post uh, doctoral thesis and things like that so wonderful uh, different set, sets of people that we have been uh, following reading watching but uh, i think something that was missing was uh, the kind of conviction right i mean uh, the people around uh, over here in the community the collective experience everyone has and uh, amazing this thing i mean uh, experiences in their own fields i think that definitely help uh, in terms of the community I'll, i'll come to the program i mean uh, the, the courses so course is really very detailed and uh, typically focusing on the metabolic conditions uh, and how we can counter that uh, to the extent that um, i mean uh, each and every like let's say four five six different situations or conditions metabolic syndromes that we can have and what exactly is to be required to be done when let's say someone and and what are the different aspects that we should be getting to understand when a person is uh, being on certain medication pertinent to that particular program i mean uh, particular to that particular condition so we get uh, a lot different uh, this thing viewpoints about that particular disease and what is required to basically uh, uh, remedy those right so i i would i would highly talk about and recommend this program to anyone and everyone while let's say they are uh, they themselves are coming across any metabolic conditions or they want to be getting into this particular field and help people to basically uh, uh, remedy their their other people's uh, metabolic conditions right but and then the other thing is uh, the way this course flows right i mean one it is online so you absolutely don't have any manual interventions and uh, the way it is been structured laid out i mean i have not seen to be very honest and uh, i have not seen any course like this which is being uh, so uh, amazingly created right i mean so it it's very easy for anyone and uh, people get people must be getting hooked on to that i mean in terms of uh, I, i need to be getting to understand um, the the next thing the next next thing so that's how i think it's it's really very helpful uh, most of the people even uh, the normal people who need to be going through some of these courses and this is probably one of the best uh, in this space yeah i think you really covered well on the course uh, you you actually hit the nail on the head 
uh, when I was analyzing the post for myself as well. So, uh, Yogesh, maybe uh, give us a little more uh, insight onto the second uh, case study that you yeah. wanted to discuss. You mentioned yeah, one is a remission which we've completed. Uh, yeah. The other one is is that also a remission? That's also a remission. Uh, we may not get into too many uh, details, but I'll talk about because there are certain different situations. So I'll talk about okay. that. Uh, right. I think, uh, yeah. So, so yes. why these are different situations? So uh, you're able to see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So this, uh, she, she's like uh, 55 year old, 55 plus, uh, right? And then um, uh, occupation is like typically housemaker, but uh, homemaker, but at the same time, she and her husband, they are uh, running a restaurant. Uh, they're uh, in the vicinity of London somewhere. And she's been diabetic, like after second pregnancy or maybe a little later than that, uh, 15 or 18 years, she's been diabetic, right? And then currently on multiple different, uh, as you see the picture on the right, right? I mean, different kinds of medicines uh, for type 2 diabetes. I mean, she's having uh, Majomet, which is something similar to Metformin, uh, 2000 mg. But otherwise, at least two or three different uh, BP medications, so one statin, um, and already like 12 kgs over weight, right? She was, I mean, you, you can imagine postmenopausal, uh, she's probably lost all the interest in life. I mean, she was like so nervous and then she never even wanted to talk to me, right? I mean, she hardly spoken with me to be very honest. I mean, why I want this case study may not be great uh, in multiple counts, but what why I wanted to be having it, uh, you'll get to understand while I speak. So uh, imagine some someone like that who's been... Um, I mean, the kind of inflammatory conditions that she must be having because of that, she's not able to do a lot of things. I mean, somehow she's basically be able to push her day, right? I mean, um, and then uh, walk through the uh, days as such. So uh, the key trigger for them to, to approach me is like, she was asked to, her GP, right? I mean, over there, they've asked her to put on insulin and that was kind of a, that developed, uh, that triggered a lot of scare uh, with her and um, the family. And that's how they started looking for some uh, this thing, I mean, help. And that's how they approached, right? And then we'll, we'll talk about that later. But a lot of those things were, um, were uh, the driving factor for her to get started on this program. Uh, you can imagine the amount of food that would be at her disposal, right? I mean, being the owner of the restaurant. Uh, so that was another uh, kind of a challenge uh, that we had to, and that actually we turned it upside down in terms of the benefits. I'll talk about that. Um, and then uh, what she was doing was like, doing some yoga and walks, right? So this is, again, I mean, um, I, I really appreciate people, typically the, the, the influencers, right? I mean, on social media and uh, the ladies, right? I mean, who, who need to be doing a lot of uh, muscle-centric workouts because that's the need of that. I mean, it is not just ladies. I, I'll take it back it's for everyone above 40, but um, I think it is more so required for them because of the Osteo and number of other things which can kick in uh, after the, I mean, uh, once they are uh, into their pre or post menopausal, uh, this thing, I mean, phases as such. So, uh, this is something, I mean, exactly opposite of that which happens. Uh, I don't have anything against yoga, but see, uh, and, and please don't get me wrong, I'm not offending anyone. If there is uh, anyone who's yoga proponent, please don't get me wrong. But I, I'm, I'm a big fan of yoga. I'm, I, I, I practiced uh, Surya Namaskars for the last 20 years. So, uh, but only thing is, unless yoga is also done in a real, uh, let's say, uh, intense manner, uh, it, it's not going to help. People do it in a very leisurely way. They do it like just uh, another way of gossiping and things like that. Please, again, don't get me wrong. But this is what happens. I've seen, right? I mean, the, uh, pe I mean, uh, people go out for a walk and they're they are only like I'm um, chit-chatting and doing very slow walks. These are like absolutely no use as such. And then the same thing happens maybe at yoga also. The way they need to be stretching bringing that flexibility, getting into that moment probably doesn't happen. So uh, ultimately, the kind of help that they should be uh, getting, because many a times people tell these yoga teachers, trainers, uh, I mean, uh, the kind of influencers they talk about, yeah, yoga can remit uh, their metabolic conditions and whatnot, right? But it, I, I don't want to contest that. It might be happening. I don't know about that. But unless anyone is doing it in a certain fashion, in an intense manner, it's not going to happen. That's for sure. Right? So anyway, so... Uh, this is what she has been doing and uh, getting absolutely no help as such. And that's how uh, I think they, they approached and uh, we started off with this particular program. There were a lot of challenges. I would like definitely like to talk upon that and then focus on that. But when we started, her HbA1c was like 11, right? I mean, 11% really on the higher side. I mean, I, I have hardly come across. I mean, there were people like I mean, 10 plus, but uh, even probably 12 plus, but uh, she was like one of those uh, who were having the highest uh, at, uh, at, at 11. 
and then um, on on these kinds of medications but after 4 months it got down to 6.5 her medication could not and because of the fact that the same thing that uh, if she would have been in india i think it would have been a different thing because the access to doctors and uh, maybe the um, again i mean here also nothing against doctors but doctors may not immediately recommend to lower down the medication as such i mean i'm not seen that happening a lot uh but over there it, i mean uh, most of foreign countries it becomes almost impossible to even access a doctor or a nurse uh, gps and things like that so we could get it down to 300 mg from 2000 mg but that's an amazing drop like 11 uh, to 6.5 and uh, her bp uh, has started becoming very range bound which was really on the higher side her weight got reduced to almost 12 kg i think this is amazing because she never had and uh, 64 is something closer to her ideal body weight to be very honest i mean she's probably 58 or something so this is getting this was getting closer to her ideal body weight so uh, those are the kind of achievements i don't um, i i did not look at the uh, other parameters uh, i thought that uh, we we should be focusing on uh, this thing i mean t2b i'll probably add some of those uh, if uh, if i'm having uh, uh, access to that what worked again is the same thing low carb and uh, i think in her case fortunately the mindset change was not i mean it it was kind of quicker as compared to the earlier i mean um, to to my surprise it was a lot quicker than the earlier uh, case study that we have looked at because i don't know the proximity of food or what not there was no social stigma there was no taboo around that i mean they have been consuming these kinds of foods uh, at home and it was accessible readily accessible in the restaurant also their own restaurant so that's how i think it was uh, an easier change and then uh, she got used to even uh, two meals a day in a very quicker amount of time floor climbing i think remains the constant over here uh, most of these people they have uh, the homes uh, where they have i mean in house this thing i mean stairs uh, they they uh, they these people have been using uh, the facility that is available inside their home really well so she was using that may not be to the extent of what the other person have done but she was using that to whatever extent and then she basically moved to squats i think one of the biggest wins in this case was like moving her away from yoga i mean not because i don't like yoga obviously because it was not helpful uh, yeah i mean squats is something that she started doing uh, surya namaskar to a larger extent she started doing so uh, that actually helped in terms of uh, her fat loss and maybe maybe whatever extent uh, metabolic health uh, right i mean um, so and then i think um, she she yeah, like i said that uh, she adapted the low carb regime real quick so uh, those are the things which have worked what is i mean there are there were challenges i think the only one that i mentioned over here which is basically so i make sure that everyone is logging their food in an excel i think most of us uh, must be doing that but uh, i want to be i want that to be happening in a very disciplined manner typically for people who are diabetics because uh, we need to be monitoring their uh, blood glucose levels really really uh, i think uh, cautiously and uh, someone who's like uh, uh, very very i mean highly diabetic uh, that becomes a complete uh, i mean that becomes a complete mandate that they need to be monitoring that we need to be privy to that and then that's how we need to be what i mean bringing changes to the food maybe lower the medications if uh, they they are with their consent or maybe with their doctors consent and and obviously we need to be having a lot of data points to go back to the doctors and then uh, basically request them whether this can be changed so uh, unfortunately i mean there are like very 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 uh, rare cases uh, i i don't entertain i mean a lot of times i i may sound harsh but because uh, people are having these kinds of conditions they need to be taking control of their health and they need to be do certain things in a certain way if they cannot do that i think uh, the uh, the, the um, and and you might be having certain other opinions i think this is how i am i i like to be doing things in a very 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 structured manner because otherwise i won't be having absolutely any clue about what's happening in those people's uh, lives and uh, where i'm trying to be helping them so that's how i want to be uh, having some control through these data points so logs were not available at all from day one nothing was available so i i was basically checking how you're doing so maybe on whatsapp uh, we were getting to understand blood glucose levels are okay then the next question is okay if it is not not good then what kind of food that you had so a lot of back and forth on that particular front and then but somehow i think it progressed and that's how i think uh, we could not get to uh, let's say an advanced level when the medication could have been gotten over or whatever right i mean or maybe reduced to a larger extent it could not have been achieved but uh, that is one thing the second thing is i think this lady was like really not very um, interactive interacting so uh, like i mean again many a times uh, uh, 
the husband used to respond uh, in certain ways and that to like uh, not very very uh, elaborate as such. so basically lack of communication i would say is is uh, the great challenge over here is an immense, immense challenge over here and that's how it probably was not could not have been progressed uh, the way it could have progressed as such but so so uh, to, to to put it in another perspective i think uh, what uh, on on any um, regimes on these lines we definitely need to be monitoring observing and logging some of i mean a uh, lot of things happening so i am also working currently training a lady in her 40s she's from i am ahmedabad right and she's actually added few more columns to that excel that i've shared with her and she's uh, she's logging number of different observations she's she's seeing right i mean in terms of uh whatever positive negative so that uh, that's an instant feedback he, these are the changes which are happening if i'm sleep deprived what what is happening if i'm basically stressed if i'm not having uh, my food at the right time so she is getting an immediate feedback and get an understanding about uh, what are the different things which are impacting our health right and then so so this is very important to be a lot more observant about what we are doing uh, every single change that we are bringing uh, to our lives how it is impacting uh and then uh, basically uh, being communicative right so i i i i feel great when people are giving a lot of feedback i mean some of these things are happening not happening uh, uh i am probably not liking this so i mean many of people do only talk when we get into calls which is like maybe after one week and then they talk about um, i was having this issue probably sometime back last week and then i think it is already gone past right i mean we cannot take absolutely any action to to basically uh, help that condition as such so a lot of communication is required in terms of uh, having quicker uh, let's say resolutions on certain things and uh, what else i think uh, yeah i mean i've covered uh, i may be talking a lot about mindset or maybe uh, some of the other uh, uh, behavioral aspects but i believe that these play probably an equally important role in terms of getting closer to the success as such so i'll take a pause i think yeah i think one important thing i wanted to just give another uh, uh, another reference right i mean when people are communicating so uh, last evening i got a i got a message from another person that i'm uh, training so this person has uh, messaged me he is having an app where he's uh, checking his snoring score and uh, while at the start of the start of the program i was telling him what all different so it is not just about let's say weight loss it is just not about uh, correcting your metabolic disorders it is having a huge number of benefits and to the extent like i mean people have uh, you you won't believe it there is a 50 year old that i've got i've trained uh, almost 3 years back he uh, was i mean he and his wife uh, sorry he is in uh, he and his uh, mother only uh, two of them uh, were living together and then uh, his mother when i visited him he was like a friend's friend i visited them at their home and then uh, the the mom was telling he he snores a lot कुछ कर सकते हैं क्या बेसिकली यू आर ट्रेनिंग हिम ऑन सम अदर थिंग बट ही सोर्स अ लॉट एंड आई आई एम नॉट गेटिंग सी एंड देन आफ्टर अ फ्यू मे बी मंथ मंथ एंड हाफ व्हेन आई हैव विजिटेड देम शी वाज एक्चुअली थैंकिंग मी लाइक आई मीन फ्रॉम द बॉटम ऑफ हर हार्ट द स्नोरिंग इज कंप्लीटली गॉन राइट एंड देन द ओनली थिंग आई वुड से व्हाट्स कॉन द द बिग कंट्रीब्यूटिंग फैक्टर वाज द व्हीट गेटिंग ऑफ व्हीट आई थिंक that's one particular thing that can help everyone so this person who messaged me yesterday was telling me the same thing that his app is showing the same thing and he's getting a lot more sound sound sleep because he's not snoring snoring anymore i think it's also a function of maybe some weight loss but otherwise i think people have been helped a lot at different levels and for that they need to be knowing uh, they need to start observing themselves real well and when people are doing these things like they're logging they're observing they are that means they're definitely committed right and they they are they are definitely getting quicker towards their success as such so yeah i mean i've covered it most of the things about this also i'll take a pause now yeah any questions yeah uh, you know you mentioned that there was not much communication from this person and uh, mm -hmm. how we have dealt with it um have they continued like is this still in progress or is this a case study that has uh, you know they 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 were happy with the goal that they achieved at this point where they moved the medication dosage down yeah so that's what transpired right so this is what uh, the feedback that i received unfortunately they or whatever i mean they 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 uh, they thought that uh, they they don't need any further help as such i think their target was their intent was not to get on the insulation uh, insulin sorry and then uh, nhs uh, they i mean uh, this thing uk right uh, they actually yes. have told them one of the gps that you absolutely you, you don't need to be having any insulin 
so i think their goal was like not to get into that particular mode i think they were happy and i usually don't impose right i mean if they are happy that's okay i mean if you if you require help we can uh, work together people have worked with me for a lot longer duration they they completed probably in 4 months and that's about it. but uh, i think I, I i mean like they were they they are not very social and uh, i probably have not preview to their condition as of now uh i am not too sure where they are heading but i keep on getting some messages in between and apparently she is doing absolutely fine i could get to see uh, the pictures from their uh, son or daughter's uh, this thing wedding and then uh, they're still the same both of them husband and wife uh, there is a case study for husband also not uh, for uh, this thing i mean uh, uh, hb1c like uh, uh, diabetes for uh, for other things i mean weight loss and other things but uh, both of them are doing wonderfully well yeah i i just don't know the exact numbers at this point in time yeah for them actually another question i'd like to ask is uh, you know women at that age uh, do find it very difficult to lose weight one two uh, tend to uh, you know uh, stay away from exercise very yeah. strongly and i think you right. mentioned about it that you know they are also of a, uh, that she was also of a similar mindset uh, how were you able to convince them on the importance of it because even getting them to squat sometimes can be really difficult yeah and and this is where i would say um, this particular community and group can be of great help because the amount of messages that we exchange and the knowledge that we share so uh, and and this and uh, probably uh, otherwise also but uh, definitely uh, d life uh, community helps in a in a in a greater way so sarcopenia is something that i've shared with them and what are the uh, what are the uh, damaging aspects about sarcopenia and again i think if not her the husband definitely was brought into that instantly that they need to be doing he was doing some gymming but he started doing that in a much more vigorous manner he also basically must have pushed uh, the lady to get started with certain things that she's probably not very inclined to but they uh, they understood the importance of uh, retaining muscles maybe building muscles uh, importance of proteins to basically feed those muscles and uh, i think that's where that particular insight is very much required so i think one thing that i uh, what, what i do is uh, while during my initial uh, introductory calls i make sure that people i also assess them whether they have that kind of an insight because oh, sorry they have that kind of an uh, inclination because see this is not most of us i think are not into the into the into the space like i mean ek mahine mein char kgs kam karna hai so that is what i tell them that i'm not here for that absolutely not if you are having that kind of an request we can i mean i can help but that's not my um, passion right so uh, you need to be understanding i mean i basically am running a lifestyle reset program so this is not a point in time thing you need to be giving in fact the first four weeks to get into this particular change and then get habituated to that adapted to that and then later on embrace that and maybe run with that for your life span right so uh, one month 4 kg i mean that can be done but please don't have only that expectation your expectation should be a lot more than that and people basically get a lot more i think uh, people also uh, uh, get a lot more i think uh, insight and uh, this thing i mean um, a lot of uh, different kind of aspects associated with their health and that's how i think they become a lot more attentive when when the expectation is said that this is not a run of the mill kind of a program you need to be giving your 100% and that's how you you'll see success and which is going to be there for your life span i think that's where people start doing it in a very i think profound manner as such yeah okay uh, i think you had some two really wonderful case studies to cover is there any other question somebody would like to ask from the audience here okay uh, i think we'll uh, move on um, so yogesh i uh, really yeah anjali you have something yeah um, so i just have one question to in fact both of you um uh, yogesh because you 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 talking about a lot of case studies so just wanted to know if you worked with younger people meaning somebody doing their college and dependent on their parents yeah. somebody studying dependent or even younger kids yeah. i think uh, koshni was uh, this some also asking you because i do know that you work with uh, the younger generation as well so the question to in this context is see uh, in most of these cases where there are younger kids or uh, college students or who are just starting off to work you know they still highly dependent on their parents and yeah. uh, a few of them understand that either they have contracted 
P2D or they have gained excessive weight or in case of women, um, they have uh, starting stages of PCOS and all of that. And uh, they start reading up and they want to know about low carb and all of that. So, but the parents and the family really are not aware. They are not fully in line. So uh, how do you reach out and connect with these family members? Because uh, you know that these guys cannot do anything independently. They need the family help. They need the parent support. So how do you reach out and connect and talk to them about it? Do you convince or do you just lay down facts just to get an idea? Yeah. You, you want to go first? Oshini, I have a couple of things to talk about. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe I can just give a little bit about my experience with the younger generation. Yeah. Uh, there are two things that I do follow. If the uh, you know the uh, person themselves have reached out to me, I do ask them a couple of questions. Who is the decision maker in your house? Who is who are you dependent on financially? Because these are two people who you know you'll inevitably know that who are. Uh, influencing them and in case they say something or in case uh, you know they contradict what we're trying to teach them I don't want them to have a lot of confusion and then run to the internet and you know mix things up so the discussions always happen with both of them so in this in in the case of uh, a couple of uh, cases that I'm currently handling uh, teenagers uh, typically between the age of 13 to about 17 it's always done with the person who they are dependent on for cooking, uh, which is typically the mom. And in one case, it's only the dad. So, you know, I work with all three of them because until the mom or the dad understand and are willing to support them and understand the science and buy into the science, uh, it, you know, they may not be able to sustain. Even if the, you know, um, the kid or uh, the the young adult here is able to understand and follow through or even you know make decisions uh, with something small like saying that I'll prepare one meal or um, you prepare this for me even if all this they are willing to do unless that person is in front of me I don't let them get started itself because yeah. it doesn't see through completely if it is them being the only decision maker one two uh, there's a lot of temptation and I try to understand are they going through anything else emotionally because uh, that age they are going through a lot of emotional uh, peer pressures and you know a lot of things uh, that can distract them even though they have the right intention uh, they may not know how to execute it through the end and that could be personality that could be environment that could be a lot of things so unless you are um, working with that entire family as a whole to understand all aspects you know it doesn't really come about very fruitful and it is a harder uh, group to work with that is uh, given because uh, they tend to have a lot of breaks uh, a lot of cheats which don't tend to happen with others uh, am i still audible yeah you're audible yeah yes 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 so so, so you, you covered that portion i think uh, you can go ahead and yeah. yeah, I think uh, there is probably one quick thing, uh, one uh, or two pr pr probably examples, but one uh, you're very young girl, like 16 year, 12 standard uh, PCOD, right? And then uh, I usually used to have uh, small talks with her, but uh, longish talks with the mother, right? I mean, with the mom, just to ensure that the things are on track. That's one. Second is about maybe a couple of uh, guys, I mean, very young guys, 16, 17. So I, I'm, I'm working with their moms typically, right? I mean, I'm making sure that the moms are there in most of those calls. If possible, that's but at least moms definitely required because of uh, maybe cooking perspective and whatnot. The other thing, other important thing is, sorry, I mean, uh, why we are doing it, I a lot of information is to be provided in terms of the metabolic health. That blood marker and if, let's say, the continue, this particular thing continues to uh, be like this for, let's say, a uh, number of years, what different, uh, let's say, conditions that it can transpire to. And that, that definitely helps uh, to get a very uh, serious understanding with most of these individuals. Yeah, sorry. I so does that cover it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, just one last uh, clarification. Now, a lot of times I've noticed that some of these kids who do their own research and, you know, they come on to this low carb or they understand that diet, dietary interventions are important. They also, when they go back, it's a typical mix, uh, environment there. And, you know, brown rice is better, switch to brown rice. Ghar ka sweets are better, don't eat bahar ka sweets, but this is definitely function. So, so with parents in that kind of an extremely traditional mindset, uh, 
what kind of uh, uh, conversations do you just take up the blood work and start talking about metabolic health or how do you work it out um, with poshni and um, i think uh, yogesh you were also mentioning a pcos case right we see yeah. that you're working with so yeah. uh, i'm sure you'd have come across all of such extremely traditional people yeah. so how do you break that barrier so i i basically uh, probably i'll quickly cover i mean in, in a minute and then poshni can go but um, i basically have uh, I, i conduct two or three sessions and uh, typically mm-hmm. focusing on their maybe uh, the context of their uh, blood report metabolic health a lot of myths which are which we are surrounded with and what is the background for those myths and uh, what exactly we need to be uh, uh, i mean uh, getting uh, switched to so a lot of these things that i cover up front uh, knowing that what kind of questions uh, that would line up right i mean as we progress mm-hmm. so i think most of the things are being uh, clarified to them up front and that's how it becomes uh, a lot more easier right i mean to get started in a very quick way yeah sorry i mean you can uh, poshni you have something right uh actually anjali what i have seen work with very traditional families is uh, give handing them out a couple of recipes helps um if they're coming down to my center i try to prepare traditional food uh, no cup way in my house that i hand out a sample uh, though it doesn't work every time it's not feasible if they are staying in some other city or something but these are some of the things i've understood that uh, the parents also understand because their concern comes from only one thing for this one person i'm not going to cook something different that is usually yeah. what boils down to so if we can yeah. show them that it's really not a big deal that it's actually easier that you know if you have some help if you can afford a help have a help prep the meal so that she or he himself can perhaps cook and go which doesn't take a long time or if you itself have some prep, uh, help for preparation now if this is out of question because there, there are sometimes extremely traditional people who don't prefer to have anybody coming into their kitchen in that case what i tell them is i send them the recipe and tell them listen you are anyway boiling these vegetables you are anyway doing this anyway you are doing this just you know make these small changes and prepare the two dishes let me know if it's really a burden and all of you try it at home so you know i give them these kind of tips because end of the day these households depend on i can't spend too much time i don't want to do more than what i already have on my plate super cool uh and uh, i think i'm supposed to raise the question just one last question uh if we can't take it now we can always do it offline um have you had a chance to work with underweight folks underweight and p2d uh, if that's quickly what are the two things you do to ensure that uh, you don't they don't reduce weight further and they also maybe uh, bump up their weight a bit more i think yogesh you may want to okay right yeah. so so there is very that's a very rare situation very good question but uh, i think i came across probably just once or twice and uh, yeah so uh, i i I've, i've made basically slight changes in terms of their uh, this thing i mean the uh, food pattern and then uh, put them on some other workouts uh, exercises than that uh, what they are doing earlier that is actually helped in terms of uh, stopping the weight where it is currently so that's uh, there is still work in progress so i may not be able to reflect in terms of uh, how it is benefited but it is definitely not lowering further as so uh, the food changes in food and changes in uh, workouts definitely help in terms of not uh, reducing it further my sense is we need not be a lot worried because most of the weight that we are still losing is going to be uh, don't think it's going to be muscle weight at all it is going to be a fat mass not muscle mass as, as such so we need not worry a lot as as, as such but uh, moving to let's say muscle centric workouts definitely help so we need to be uh, making sure that these people are actually started and uh, increasing their intensity in terms of the muscle centric workouts as well okay great thanks so much yogesh and kushni sir anup has a question and pramila probably also has a question yeah so i'll, I'll take uh, anup's first uh, anup has a question in terms of uh, the timing for the exercise uh, morning and evening uh, i i uh, i definitely consider i i've been doing i think both uh, things uh, for for a very long period of time very early morning workouts and then i go for a walk most of the times in the evenings light walks or maybe even intense walks also but coming back to your question uh, what you have, what you have put on is right uh, metabolism is active in the evening again i mean uh, post meal workouts definitely would be a lot more uh, beneficial return on investment would be on the higher side but there is a big but uh, anup over here why 
people are always looking for excuses you can imagine this particular world when people uh, either any and everything like i mean uh, office calls uh, birthday parties uh, someone is not well i have to be stepping out for something else so the workout schedule i mean that particular slot itself is been sacrificed every single time so that's how i think i urge them to to basically look for something which is in the morning because that's where the number of excuses are going to be on the lower side so more from an consistency and making in making it a habit standpoint i urge them to get it in the morning but uh, what 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 you're saying is right i mean evening i think there's going to be different kind of benefits but for to get i mean to get to that particular benefit part they need to be doing it in a very consistent way which won't happen in the evening that's how i usually don't suggest it to be in the evening as such i hope i answered that question yeah so pramila has a question um, stair climbing uh, after the mill uh, yeah so uh, we we do it in two or three different ways um, uh pramila so one is definitely uh, whoever is like uh, resolving that trying to resolve their diabetic condition uh, the post meal stair workout is non negotiable it has to happen someone is uh, only their weight loss kind of a journey or maybe any other kind of a journey uh, i think that post meal uh, staircase climbing can probably uh, an option they if they want they can do that but otherwise i think for everyone uh, the early morning or morning stair climb ex uh, exercise is great uh, if there is a condition like t2d uh, they can even do that maybe after every meal or at least one meal like a large meal uh, lunch after lunch if they can do that that will be great so that is how i basically how many do you suggest uh, when client is 70 plus no i have i haven't come across 70 plus years who i put on um, the stair climb as a, a kind of an exercise but if they have been doing that i think there's no harm in uh, basically because i'll i'll tell you i mean I'll I'll have a word with maybe Anup and Shashi a little later because uh, a wonderful thing that can be covered. I just that just clicked um, in my mind. But um, my my uh, father-in-law, right? I mean, who's like eighty years, and there is a condition that I I would like to talk about maybe in separate session. But uh, I'm making sure that this person who's going through very strenuous kind of an uh, treatment, uh, because doctors also mentioned it's not just me. I'm doing. Uh, I'm trying to be doing that, but not stairs. But I'm basically making sure that he's doing a good amount of walk. 80 plus years kind of very serious kind of a treatment i'll talk about that probably in one of the uh, other sessions but yes coming back to if that is possible why not i mean these people would need to be doing some of those activities because stair climbing can am amazing form of even uh, muscle strengthening or building kind of a lower body right uh, exercise as such so if i mean looking at a physiological condition we can definitely take a call whether to get started or not and even let's say a couple of uh, floats right i mean it's a, it's a good thing to get started with if that person is not having any other cardiac uh, issues and things like that yeah okay. uh so one more thing is about knee and back pain uh, stair climbing or strength training 70 kg sorry uh, yeah so so the the uh, 70 was in reference to the kgs or age sorry i mean i i got it wrong then pramila Can actually unmute and ask the question and clarify. Yeah, this was uh, this was for seventy plus kgs. That's why kgs. I mentioned they're not for people who are seventy year old, because yeah. I saw that your first client was around seventy four, and you have suggested stair climbing for them, right? Yeah, yeah. So I see it. It is basically a function of how much of uh, body fat percentage, right? I mean, so seventy kgs uh, may not be a lot for many people, but. Uh, coming back very uh, short and sweet is like uh, i'm i'm working with people who are like 150 kg uh, another one is around 130 kg uh, and and based on their own assessment they are doing a bit of stair climb not a lot not a lot but uh, i mean uh, one person who is like 130 he's gone down to around uh, 121 or 122 so he's doing good amount of stairs right i mean maybe around 15 20 floors and things like that but he's very young he's like 30 uh, not even 30 uh, years of age the other one is almost 50 years of age and then uh, he started he uh, at 152 kg of weight currently is around 141 after 3 months but uh, he is doing very less of floor climb i myself i'm not uh, basically asking him to be doing that i i i basically asked him to be doing something like an incline treadmill which is uh, a lot better exercise in this particular case when they are like really very obese not even overweight so uh, because it 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 is definitely going to be putting a lot of uh, extra strain on their cardiac muscle 
as well as their entire lower body right so all the all the joints of lower body so uh, 70 kg i would say i mean uh, it, it is basically maybe uh, 10% or 15% body uh, and more of a body fat uh, if that's the case then it is okay to have there is no harm in having a stair climb as an exercise so if it is like too much on the higher side if body fat is too much on the higher side maybe 30% i mean 35 40% of body fat then we definitely need to assess uh, whether they need to be doing some of these things or not okay but a uh, lot of people complain of knee pain and back pain the moment we suggest them stair climbing especially those who are you know above 70 kilos that was my query so uh, if if that is the case what else do we like suggest them is it just like uh, squats because again squats it involves knees so so pramil i think i i give due respect to uh, those people but many many times people are like really sorry i mean uh, i don't get me wrong but they are lazy they don't want to be doing certain things they might not have done that in the past so we can we can talk about what they have done uh, mm. so we we can take the history and then their inclination if they are okay to be doing certain things if they are not then we can start it with maybe some other thing just the walk or maybe just the treadmill walk like i mentioned right i mean so some of those things definitely help i mean uh, if treadmill is also not available if you have an inclined terrain somewhere closer i i mm. ask them to basically walk on that inclined terrain even if it is like 200 meters go on up and down maybe for 30 minutes just go on up up and down on that 200 meters and i'm not kidding i'm this is what i do i have done during the pandemic this is what i mean uh, uh, i ask people to be doing so there are different kind of ways to be looking at things did not be just the stair climb but we can look at uh, let's say incline uh, inclined treadmill we can look at inclined terrain Uh, we can also look at uh, uh, assisting that you can increase the intensity pramila by adding some weight like i mean my uh, yesterday's video i am having 5 kg of weighted vest on my back i am having 4 kg of uh, ankle weights on my at my ankles right so you can increase the intensity so uh, there are number of different ways we can do that that's not a problem got it thank you yogi actually a lot of them uh, in the chat have also sent the message anjali also has put in like start with walking and then slowly build it up even anup singh says the same thing like maybe start with 50 stairs and ask them to build up uh talking from my personal experience before i went into low carb and uh, uh you know very low carb diet uh, i had a lot of inflammation and pain on my knee where a little uh, exercise would trigger it so i started wearing the knee pad and then doing that really helped a lot once the inflammation got taken care of and two to three weeks of the diet then it was much easier to continue it at intenser levels so maybe look at that uh, and then uh, help them out with uh, as yogesh said yes there's a there's a group of people who have the laziness issue but uh, you know if it's an inflammation or something like that uh, vitamin d or these kind of things after that is taken care of uh, start small and then build it that 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 personally has helped me uh, because i had a very bad uh, the, uh, left knee before switching completely into low carb sorry so yeah i mean i i think first case study i mentioned about the progressive overload or incremental update so that's where i think uh, a lot of these things can be lined up start very small and then slowly gradually uh, basically get them into the what them into the physical activities and then slowly ramp it up So absolutely, I mean, as everyone is saying, you might be doing the same thing, Pramila. But yeah, this case, I think, if it is like really very peculiar, we can talk. I mean, take it separately and talk about that as well. Yeah. So, um, if I could just put in a uh, two bit over okay. here, I had a similar, I had a similar case early on. Um, heavy inflammation, lot of very very poor eating habits, and very heavy heavy ulcerative colitis issues, IBS issues, and all of that, right? so this person had challenge walking even 10 minutes matlab she would walk 10 to 15 minutes and feel extreme fatigue and all of that so pramila in such cases i did not encourage initially i didn't even talk about any exercise because the focus was on getting the health set out right right uh, ensuring that the person feels better because in most cases the uh, intent to do the exercise is also because of how the person is feeling they like feeling so fatigued and lethargic and not even having that inclination to get up and go so once they switch to a low carb diet when their energy levels go up automatically you you know they will be more open to going out doing a bit of walking so the person who barely could walk 10 15 minutes without huffing puffing and feeling the fatigue um 
went on a 10 day vacation within 15 days of starting low carb and did not see any kind of a challenge walking and now the person is planning for longer treks right so uh, uh, don't push with exercise see the intensity level or see the uh, health condition of the person and accordingly you can slowly build it up because once they start feeling better like koshni yeah. says all the inflammation goes down all the pain and the fatigue levels and the tiredness and all of that starts going down you know automatically when the energy levels are high they will feel like you know 10 15 is not a big deal let's do it just find that and then they can easily ramp it up from there i and i hope this yeah. helps as well from no, absolutely yeah thanks for that Thank you summed it up really well and thank you hope that answered your question now uh, pramila i think uh, probably we can wrap up this session yogesh is there anything else you'd like to input well, or we can wrap it up? just one last bit uh, that uh, i really am thankful for this uh, particular opportunity thanks uh, uh, anup thanks shashi thanks poshini for uh, all the support and uh, having me over here today a wonderful talk thanks yeah. I think we learned a lot uh, from your two case studies. Uh, working on people's mindset is a priority for uh, long term, you know, help them reach their goal and let them keep that goal for a long term. That I think that's what we learned from your second Absolutely. case study, yeah. working with their mindset, even though communication from their end uh, is not that uh, clear. And that, I'm sure that was frustrating because, <laughs> you know, when yeah. communication True. is not clear, yeah. it, it, it leaves you in a blind spot. Um, so that's definitely some a uh, big takeaway for me personally. Uh, you know, D Life. Uh, I'd like to talk about the D Life uh, Diploma Program because uh, you know, as Yogesh mentioned, that it is exhaustively vast, and um, uh, and that's a good thing because the internet is filled up with information from so many resources and studies. Where you know, even if you want to understand about low carb uh, or keto or any of these aspects. It, um, it can confuse you. There's so many conflicting information that can confuse you. Uh, but this one course has been designed in a way uh, where everything is put together under one umbrella in a structured format. And I think that structure is, uh, for most of us who tend to self-study, who have learned, uh, it, it is a beautiful way to put everything together under one umbrella and uh, understand it in one particular flow. I would, uh, you know, say that is one of the biggest takeaway that a person can get from this diploma program. Uh, second thing is, if you have, uh, if you, anybody in your family or your, yourself are metabolically unhealthy, it could be diabetes, it could be any of the, you know, chronic illnesses that you hear of today and want to self-manage it in a much better way with a lot of scientific understanding, you know, to work with your doctor, you need to be able to talk their language, you know, even if it's as simple as that, yes, I would recommend you to take it up because it's matter of your life, right? Uh, also, if through that you want to transition like how Yogesh did or like how I did, transition into making this a career, I think this is the best course that you can take up because it's also accredited by the NAC uh, accreditation in India. So these are some of the things that, you know, I uh, filtered out or, you know, I looked into when I took up the diploma program, currently pursuing it myself. Uh, we'll be completing it shortly. And, uh, you know, that these are some of the things that I would say everybody should look into the course for either themselves or to continue a practice. And uh, Anup Singh and Shashikant uh, Iyengar have really... Uh, you know, built this platform of D-Life, you know, and, and many others. I'm sorry if I don't take yeah, your name. Many others. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I think this platform is unique because uh, Indians are very emotional with their food. You try to change it too much, they get upset. <laughs> and uh, here's a unique way where without changing too much, you can still concentrate on your health. So um, with that, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Anup and Shashikant for this opportunity. And thank you, Yogesh, for a really wonderful session. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you.